Umqua Valley Arts is proud to partner with TEDx Roseburg on a project to spread a beautiful ripple of positivity in our community through the art of rock painting. Join us today as we learn the creative process from local rock painting expert Sandy Kolker and prepare to cast your stones of inspiration into our community. As a nonprofit passionate about community and deeply committed to serving those around us, UVA operates with a mission to create and foster a climate that supports arts appreciation, participation, and education. We couldn't be more excited to be a part of this project that is so aligned with our mission and look forward to watching the ripple effect connect our community in ways that we know only art can. The beauty of inspirational rock painting is that absolutely anyone, people of all ages, can be a part of the positive movement and spread joy to those around them. The ripple magic starts now. Let's cover our community with beautiful and inspirational painted rocks. My name is Sandy Kolker and I live in Roseburg. My big hobby is I paint rocks. <laughs> People think it's silly, which I think it's silly, but it's so much fun that it's addictive and anybody can do it. Children do it, adults do it, elderly do it. It's just a lot of fun. And I, what I basically do is we, I'm part of WCPR, West Coast Painted Rocks, and we paint rocks and we, we hide them and then people find them and they, they can keep them or they can rehide them. And it's, it's acts of kindness. That's what we're doing. So when someone finds a rock, on the back is usually the artist's initials. Um, like on mine, I put my initials, I put the, the year. I put Roseburg, Oregon, so they know where it came from. And then I put on there, keep or rehide. And I put uh, the hashtag WCPR. And what they're supposed to do, you know, if, they ha if they're on Facebook, a lot of people aren't. So they'll have someone else post for them. But you can go to Facebook and you search for WCPR and it pulls up West Coast Painted Rocks. And then you can post on there, hey, look what I found at Walmart, parking lot, or whatever. And then um, they post the, a picture of the front, they turn it over, they have a picture of the back, so they post the front and the back, that way the artist knows that it's been found. It's fun because the artists know that your rock has been found, and then they're gonna find out if it's gonna travel or if, or if it's found its forever home. That's what got me started. Oh boy, what an addiction. <laughs> You know, it's so satisfying when you hide a rock and then someone posts it and they say, oh my God, I needed this so bad today. I, I was in such a funk and I, I just, I felt so bad and I found this rock and you just made my day. And you know, it just makes your heart melt. And that's why we do it. We do it because acts of kindness, you know, especially for people who, who need a pick me up. You know, it's just something fun. It's something fun for us. And, um, but it's so much more to people who find them and really need them. Well, for people who are just starting out and want to start painting rocks, the first thing you need to do is you need to find your canvas. So you need to find your rocks. So the best place to find, you can go to the beach, you can go to the rivers, the streams, the creeks, um, anywhere you can find rocks, but you want a nice smooth surface rock. You don't want something that's really rough. It's too hard to paint on them. Uh, but you want something that's nice and smooth and you wanna make sure that uh, you wash them. You, you need, they need to be scrubbed before you put any paint on them. And that's the, the, both sides, the entire rock. You need to scrub it. Let them dry. They have to be completely dry. Otherwise the paint won't stick. And then you have to make sure you have acrylic paints. Now I get my paints all over the place. Uh, Michaels, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. Um, it's wherever they have um, art supplies. And, um, and it will, they will wash off if you don't protect them and put a sealant on them. So you wanna make sure you also get a sealer. Uh, when you're first starting out, the best thing to do is probably the spray sealers. You can get those anywhere. It's just a clear acrylic. Okay, so the tools you're gonna need are paint brushes, dotting tools. You can use anything, but I primarily use dotting tools. They're just easier for me. I can push the paint around easier and where I want it. 
um, I always take the bottle and, and I shake it, shake it really good. And then when I'm ready to paint, I unscrew the top and I use the paint from the top. It's much easier. You can just dip it in there and, and put it on your, on your rock directly. So, uh, but always shake your paints because especially metallics or, or um, glitter paints, they're, they separate. So you want to make sure that everything's, that your paints are shaken really good before you open them. So if you want to paint the entire rock beforehand, it, it, make sure it's clean. But uh, you would get, I would get a bigger brush, uh, one that has a, a, a more, brushes on, more brushes on it, and, and then you just paint the entire thing. I use a turntable. Th those are so nice because you can just put the rock on it and then you can turn it as you paint it, which is really nice. That way you never really actually have to touch the, the rock. But you paint the whole, the whole rock and then it's going to have to dry before you apply like another layer or if you start on whatever you're doing. But it has, all your paints have to dry between applications. I get a lot of my ideas from print Pinterest or other friends. Um, or other people who have posted, I'm like, mm, I could probably do something like that. You know, it's, but Pinterest is your friend. I'm telling you, I love it. Um, a lot of times I'll go, like if I'm anywhere where there's books, I look through the books and I take pictures of things. I take so many pictures of ideas, my phone just blows up. So, and I have no room. So that's a big thing is you can just take pictures because I'll go to the store. I'll go over to Sherm's or whatever. I'll take a picture of something that's on a glass. I'm like, I can do that. And, and, and I transfer it right onto the rock. I just, I just, I, everything I do is freehand. So I just eyeball it and I put it on the rock. Um, it's funny because, you know, I look at mine and, and I just know when it's done. Because sometimes too much is too much over, it's overwhelming. And sometimes the simplest things just are the prettiest. You know, like when I do my flowers, I, I just do a simple flower. You know, I do the stem, the little, the little sprigs out of the stems and everything. But it's totally up, up to you. I mean, I've seen people who, who've done amazing uh, mandalas and the whole rock is covered with dots, on dots, on dots. And it is amazing. So after you're all done painting your masterpiece, make sure it dries. I always let my, all my stuff dry overnight. Uh, if you don't seal your rocks and you put your rocks outside and you hide them that, and it rains or any moisture fog, it's just going to ruin your paint. The paint's just going to wash right off over time and your design's completely gone. You want to make sure you protect it either with a spray, a spray sealer or a, a, a resin, that, a two-part resin that you apply. So you definitely want to see, you, you really want to seal your rocks. It's a gloss spray sealer. That's what I like because uh, once it's dry, it's, it's very glossy. You want to make sure that uh, you have it somewhere and it has to be outdoors because they stink like crazy. But you want to do one side first and do several coats on one side, let them dry in between the coats. Then when it's completely dry, you turn it over and you do the back side or, or the front, you do the other side the same way. Once it's completely dry, you can hide them. The, if, if you're using a resin sealer, then I use a heat gun to get the bubbles out. Um, some people don't. I like to get all the bubbles out. So, and it's, the heat guns are so cheap. They're like 10 bucks over at um, Harbor Freight. So cheap. Um, but you have to be careful when you use them because you can't have them too close to the rock or you'll just melt the resin with this all right, right on it. But uh, yeah, I use that only for resin rocks. Okay, so when I, when I use my resin, I get everything, I get everything ready. I get my, my paper down on my table. I get uh, everything ready ahead of time because once your fingers are in that resin, you can't do anything else. So, and I always apply it with rubber gloves, latex gloves. Um, and if you have a long hair, put it back because OMG, you're going to have a heck of a time getting that out of your hair. I have found that the only thing that cleans resin off of your, you know, like, like your measuring spoon or whatever, is the um, hand sanitizer. For some reason, it's the only thing that does it. So, and, and so you'd have to totally get that in your hair to, to get it out. So put your hair up if you have long hair. And another uh, pointer is when, once you've resined your rocks, you've rubbed all the stuff on it, you want to put it on a, a, a one of the, it's, I call it a cheapo uh, table placemat that you can buy at the dollar store. But it has a shiny gloss to it. It doesn't matter what the pattern is. The pattern's not going to transfer. The, the, the gloss, whatever you set it on, that's what is going to reflect on the back of your rock. 
so it's going to be glossy. If you set it on wax paper, it's going to be, it's not going to be glossy. It's going to be just like wax paper. Anyway, so it's, I have to mix it for six minutes. I get it at Lowe's for about $25. I love this, this stuff, but I mix it for, I have to make, you have to mix it for six minutes and it has to be at least 70 degrees. So in the summertime, that's not a problem. In the wintertime, I'm in front of my fireplace mixing. So, and then after six minutes, that's when you start sealing them. I have my latex gloves on. I take my rings off. I have, well, they have these tools out there. They're, they're the coolest things. Um, it's, a, it's a pin. I just use, you can use a pin to pop the bubbles because um, metallics get it, a lot of bubbles, and so do the, uh, the glitters. They get a lot of bubbles. So I've learned to j just have my pin right next to me, and then I just pop them. And the hardest part is you have to wait 24 hours before you can touch them. That is a brutal wait time. <laughs> After 24 hours, you can pick them up and you can touch them and you can look at them and take pictures of them and they're so pretty. <laughs> Get your kids to do it. Oh my gosh, how, how fun. I mean, they could paint anything. My little seven-year-old grandson loves the dotting tools. He was making polka dots all over his rocks. He had a ball. Well, a lot of people say, oh, I can't draw. I'm like, well, can you color? Can you doodle? Well, then you can, you can paint a rock. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be anything, anything at all. It can just be polka dots. It can be stripes. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be something fancy. You know, whoever finds it's just, just gonna be, they're just gonna be so happy that they found something that someone took the time to paint seal and to hide for them it's a it's a wonderful thing and, and 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 spreading kindness you know we don't sell our rocks we we hide them we hide them for people to find them so, and 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 it's fun when they travel i've had rocks that have gone all the way to israel i have hidden 200 plus in vermont and new hampshire i hid over 100 in alaska on my cruise i've hidden rocks everywhere but it's fun when they're found. When your rock is found and they post it, and you're like, yes! <laughs> it's fun. It's an addiction. Thanks so much for joining us for this rock painting class. You know, I'm so excited that UV Arts was able to bring this to our community because you always go on walks and you'll see these beautiful paintings or, you know, just really fun ones. I actually have a Pac-Man rock sitting in my house that my daughter loves. She moves it around our planters and it finds its own home naturally. And these courses are so much fun because they stand exactly for what TEDx Roseburg stands for. They're, they're these moments where we get to share these ideas, these passions, these energies that we have with everybody in the community. And we get to inspire them just in their everyday life. So. Thank you, UV Arts, for being able to bring this to our community and to make it accessible for everybody. Um, we really, really want you to share these ideas with us, to be the ripple and to paint these rocks in a way that inspires you because this is, this is all about sharing what you have to give and we really wanna see that and we welcome it. So thank you, UV Arts, for joining us and making this possible. And if you are interested, we will be hosting a TEDx event on April 10th and would love to have you there. There's a 25% off coupon code, UV Arts is what you would enter during checkout to get that 25% off. And we'll have many artists there. One of them has even uh, been showcased at UV Arts uh, recently for her wonderful work and uh, artistry. So we look forward to seeing your rocks and we hope to see you there.